Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Fungus Woods is a scenario that consists of a lovely dense forest that you have to desecrate in order to build a park big enough for the 2500 guests that you need to beat the goal. But what if the authorities stepped in and did not allow you to get rid of any trees or, to screw with you even more, advertise the park? Can you beat Fungus Woods without removing trees and without advertising? There is extremely little space between the trees, so we can't build much on the ground, but there is enough space for a spiral slide and the accompanying paths. However, if we want to build any kind of roller coaster, we will have to go up above the trees. There is simply no spot on the ground where you can build a decently long station, an entrance and exit building and still have enough space left for paths. Building high up is expensive, especially for paths, so money will be quite tight during this challenge. For this reason, the wooden coaster will be as big as it needs to be to avoid any staff penalties and not much bigger. I initially made it a little too short, so I had to add something to get to the required 370 meters of length. This wooden coaster allows us to raise the park entrance price to 20 bucks from the default 10. This is what makes the money in this challenge so tight. We have the cash machine available, so if we charged for the rides, guests would consistently keep on spending and spend hundreds of bucks in the 4 years that this scenario takes. However, here we charge for the park entrance once and after that we only make a little bit extra from stalls, but at the very end even the most frivolous guests will not have spent more than about 30 or 40 euros on shops and stalls. Advertising would help a lot here, but since we can't do that we'll need to consistently build cheap and decent rides to attract new guests. One such ride is the side friction coaster. Fungus Woods is themed as being very rustic and old fashioned, so you're not getting any big steel coaster types or any thrill rides at all. Instead we'll have to deal with the likes of the side friction coaster and its less appealing cousin the reverser coaster. Very similar rides, but the side friction looks better and feels more pleasant to build with. This time I will not connect the queue line to the path on the ground and instead start working on a second level that's above the tree line. Before we build another coaster next to it, let's build a second flat ride in the clearing that the merry-go-round is in. The crooked house fits nicely here, but there is a line of trees in the way that prevents us from easily connecting it to the path near the exit of the merry-go-round. Instead, we have to connect it much further away and then build an underground path connection between the two flat rides. This will happen many more times as trees are bloody everywhere. With the Virginia reel completed we have enough rides with high enough stats that we can now charge 40 euros for the park entrance. Guests spawn with anywhere between 40 and 70 euros in this scenario so we don't want to charge any more than this. Currently we have 4 different coaster types available and the reverser coaster is the only one we haven't built yet. I thought a nice additional challenge would be to build at least one of every ride type and to make it more interesting they also have to fulfill all their stat requirements. This is not going to be too difficult for roller coasters, but other rides, in particular the ones with a very low support limit, might be tricky. To save money, I haven't hired any staff yet, but there is quite a bit of puke by now, so we will need a few handymen. I could hire a bunch and fire them before the next payday to avoid paying them at all, but that's a lot of micromanaging and a bit cheesy, so I'm just going to get a few and let them do their jobs, we can probably afford it. The boat hire will be one of the trickier rides to fit in. You need a pond that's at least 2x4 tiles and then you also need a space for the entrance and exit buildings and a path to connect them to. I could simply remove the crooked house and the merry-go-round but that's kind of lame and eventually I found this spot right next to the park entrance. It's just big enough and makes for a perfect little boat hire. The river rafts ride luckily can be built high enough to go above the trees, otherwise we would have had to build it underground and that's a bit boring. Right now the entire park is basically one big dead end, which is not ideal, so let's turn it into a loop. The problem is, how do we figure out a way through the trees? You can barely see where the gaps between the trees are and it's very easy to run into a dead end. But then I suddenly remembered that you can see trees on the map and by zooming in on it a lot I might be able to solve it like a maze and find the best path. 
and I did. I found a path that only requires one short underground section, after which it snakes through the forest to the back of the park. Earlier I mentioned that the river rafts ride can luckily be built above the trees, but no such luxury is provided for the monorail cycles. Without access to tiny turns this ride will never ever fit on the ground, so the only remaining option is to build it below the ground. Unfortunately I am not very bright and built it only 2 units below the ground, leaving not enough clearance for the entrance and exit buildings. It's by pure coincidence that there are 2 tiles without a tree on it next to the station where I can raise the land in order to make it fit. I built a fairly long queue line with TVs to potentially store some guests, but despite the low throughput this queue line will never fill up as the ride is just too unpopular. A little while later we unlock our fifth coaster type, the wooden wild mouse. This is always a great pleasure to build with and this time is no different. The low support limit is a tad restrictive here, but it's still manageable. Immediately Immediately after we unlock the 6th and final coaster type, the steeplechase. We are still able to research more coasters, but those will all be different trains for types that we already have. The steeplechase is a terrible coaster type, it's essentially just a slightly better mini suspended coaster, which is the worst coaster type in the game. It is still a roller coaster though, so it's a decent ride by default compared to all the other ride types in the game. Just before the end of year 1 I decided I wanted a proper intense coaster and we had some leftover money so it's time for a big wooden coaster with some vertical loops. Not too big obviously, we're not that rich, but big enough that it could realistically be considered a proper roller coaster and not some tiny junior family coaster. I'm positive that spending nearly 10,000 bucks on this ride won't come back to bite us in the backside later. At the end of year 1 we have nearly a thousand guests in the park, well over the average of 625 that we need to get to the required 2500 in time. But the start almost always goes well, so we definitely have no reason to celebrate yet. What we need to do is keep up the space that we're on and expand the park. On our second side friction coaster we will build something that is not possible in vanilla, a steep drop. These track sprites do exist, but you can't access them. Open RCT2 enabled them, making this the second ride type that can fly off the tracks with access to steep slopes after the dinghy slide. However, unlike the dinghy slide, you cannot use upward steep slopes on the side friction coaster. If it goes fast enough to make the hill, it will derail on the steep to gentle track piece, so you can't have a functioning ride with this. The same happens on the dinghy slide, but there you can just use tunnels to prevent a crash. The steep slopes are still nice for gaining speed more quickly and compactly on the way down though. A second wild mouse, some stalls and a dodgems later the time has come to build another path through the woods. Using the same method I managed to find another solution of the maze of trees, which needs just two short underground sections. Even at this zoom level it's quite tricky to spot a path through the dense woods on the map and I'd rather have it even bigger. But then the path window would become so big that the buttons for building disappear below the screen and you can't use them, so there was a lot of squinting and leaning forward to the screen to get this done. Because we can't actually build much next to the path, we'll have to also extend the treetop level to here, and what better way to do this than to build a log flume. They're usually quite popular rides, so that will probably attract a good number of guests to this new area of the park. When building the monorail cycles I mentioned that its lack of tiny turns made it impossible to build one on the ground weaving through the trees. But since the car ride does have those, in addition to being able to go up and down, I wonder if we can make that work. The first challenge is finding a clearing big enough for the station, entrance and exit building and path, which I eventually found next to the intense wooden coaster. Now to build the actual ride, and this wasn't easy. To go up or down a single unit you need 4 tiles in a row, one for the turn into it, then two for the height change and then another one for the turn out of it. I really had a lot of trouble finding space for this, but eventually I found a spot by building backwards from the station. 
This clearly shows that something like a wooden coaster or a log flume would never ever fit on the ground in this challenge. Now that the path network spans most of the map, it's the perfect time to build a miniature railway to connect it all. This will also have to be underground, as while its support limit is high enough to clear some trees, others are too tall for it and there are also tons of rides in the way. Seems like a fun idea this, but it's also quite expensive and we ran out of money halfway through. I noticed that our income from the park entrance had decreased from about 7000 a month to just 2.5. This happened because our guest count eclipsed the soft guest cap. We are still getting new guests, but at a much slower rate. If this was a pay per ride park, our income would remain steady, but because it's a pay for entry park, it has died down. This is what makes pay for entry scenarios a lot harder in most situations. I tried to solve this problem by desperately building a bunch of flat rides, as while they attract fewer guests than roller coasters, their cheapness easily outweighs that. However, it's not enough, and a little bit later we are properly broke. Short of dismantling some rides, the only option option is to close the rides and the park to get the guests out so that new guests can come in. So that's what I did, but the guests didn't really want to leave. To force them to cooperate you can place some no entry signs to direct the guests towards the park entrance, but after placing just one we went into the red and I couldn't afford any more. Is this it? Is this where we strand? Not yet, as a few guests actually have left, so we can briefly reopen the park to earn enough money to afford more banners. This works, and guests are finally leaving the park. A month after we first closed the park, over a thousand have left, leaving us with just a few hundred. So much for being on track for the goal I guess, but at least we can now earn money again, and new guests should spawn quickly enough to still get us to the goal in time. With this money we can complete the railway, and this time I did build it low enough to leave enough space for the 4 unit tall entrance building. Acquiring the money for this ride was difficult, but building the thing itself was quite easy, as there's nothing in the way underground. What's not so easy is finding a spot for the queue line and exit path to connect to the main path. It's very difficult to find those spots, and we can't even use the map here, as underground stuff doesn't show up on it. Eventually, I do manage to find a suitable connection for all four stations, and our transport ride, that guests won't actually use as a transport ride, but as a regular regular ride is ready to open for business. The upper path level still isn't entirely complete, so let's build a second reverser coaster in the place where we still need a connection, so that we actually have a reason to build path there. This is how I often work, I spot a place that I want to expand to and then first build a ride before building any path. This prevents me from having to delete the path and rebuild it if I need more space than I initially thought. You do have to be careful to leave space for the path while building your ride, as otherwise you can yourself in. We have built almost all available ride types by now, but one we don't have yet is the ghost train. I'm not going to try to find a spot on the ground again like we did with the car ride, so above the trees it will have to go. There won't be much ghostliness on this ride, but we will have a few tunnels to at least make it a little bit distinct from the car ride below it. I guess the trees are slightly scary, well they would be at night, but unfortunately night doesn't exist in this game. In September year 3 we're doing quite well financially, so let's build some more sizable wooden coasters, this time even more extreme. It's not like this has gone wrong in the past where I made a mistake that I should have learned from, right? The first one I will make will go over 100 km per hour to attract the real speed freaks. Since this is built in the corner far away from everything else, it also allows us to expand the path system once more. We have researched all the different ride types by now and built at least one of each, but we're still not done with the stalls and I'm not sure whether we will get to all of them before the end of year 4. At least if we can't get them all we won't have ourselves to blame as it's the scenario design working against us. A merry go round and a dodgems later the end of year 3 is nigh and we we have about 1500 guests in the park. After the purge we needed about 2200 more guests in a little under 2 years time. 
We got over half of those in less than half the time, so we're well on schedule to get to the goal within 4 years. Currently the most exciting ride in the park is the first big woody that we built, with an excitement rating of about 7.6. This isn't very high and there's a perfect spot in the back of the park for one last big wooden coaster. This will be the most exciting and exhilarating ride in the park and we're going to use interlocking vertical loops to help us achieve that. The reason this gives such a massive excitement bonus is that it's essentially three bonuses in one. There's a bonus for having any track going through your vertical loop, having your track going through any vertical loop and having your vertical loop interlock with any other vertical loop. By interlocking loops with yourself you immediately qualify for all three of these bonuses at once giving you tons of extra excitement. It's enough to give this coaster a massive 8.68 excitement rating over a point higher than the second highest. It also has the highest intensity rating so it really is the perfect ride for thrill seekers. There's not much space left now, but still enough for another narrow wooden coaster. The soft guest cap of this park is well over 2500 already, but when a ride is broken down it doesn't contribute and I don't want to take any risks, so I'm going to keep building rides until it's at least 3000. In June year 4 we hit the guest goal, so now we only need to keep them in the park and to make sure that the park rating doesn't go below 600. On August 17th we unlock the t-shirt stall, after which we're finally done researching shops and stalls and complete the side goal of building all available ride types. The park is pretty much full now and I'm very happy with what we've built. Lots of rides, tons of stalls and a very expensive but functional multi-level pathing network to connect all of it. The one thing that I'm not so sure about is that this was actually good for the forest. We were forbidden from removing trees to preserve the forest but I think it might actually be worse off than death here. Oh well, as long as we made a profit, it's all fine. Capitalism. And make a profit, we did. At the end of year 4 we have over 3000 guests in the park and nearly enough cash in the bank to pay back the 30,000 euro loan. This challenge wasn't easy, but in the end we do beat the scenario with a reasonable margin and some great rides. To see another scenario challenge, click here to see me try to beat Ghost Town using just a tiny 15 by 4 area to build all the coasters in. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.